Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build is the Channeled Fireball Sorcerer, and it's more of a flamethrower than a fireball caster, but we'll be spewing out 7 fireballs per second and doing great damage with it. This will be a 100% crit build, this will be a no uniques required build. There are some uniques that you can use, but most of them not only boost your fire damage, but they're more built around dots like Ignite Chance, and we didn't build into damage over time at all with this build. For defense, you're still going to have some things that are defensive, such as we're stacking Endurance and going to have High Leech. We tried to cap our resistances, but we're a little bit low, but with better gear, you could get it if you really spend the time and craft or get some Exalted Drops. But Flame Ward's going to be your main defensive things. You're going to use it whenever you know you're about to take a big hit, such as an ability or a telegraphed ability from a boss that you know is about to go off. All you do is spam Flame Ward, and you could probably never be one shot because of how much damage reduction that it does give you, and that most of that damage is mitigated into your mana. Now with this, you'll have to get your mana back at some point. We'll be using Focus, which I know a lot of people don't like, and it's kind of annoying to have to stand in one spot to get mana back for 3, 4, 5 seconds. However, it was really the only option for this build. We'll also have Arcane Ascendance, and what that's going to do is give us 60% mana efficiency while it's active, so that while you're channeling Fireball, you can do it for a few extra seconds due to the mana efficiency. There is a problem with Fireball when it comes to being channeled. It doesn't really count as a channeled skill, meaning that like damage while channeling, resistances while channeling, those type of things don't work. It's kind of bugged right now. Hopefully that gets fixed in the next patch. So we stayed away from those affixes. So if you're wondering why I'm not wearing any of that on the gear other than the weapon, which I didn't feel like changing, it's because they just don't work right now. They will someday when it's fixed, but at the moment those affixes don't do anything for the build. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills, the interactions, and just how it all works. For skills, I'm running Teleport, Arcane Ascendance, Fireball with plus two levels, Flame Ward, and Focus. For Teleport, we have this set up for decoys. It'll also do Elemental Novas, and even though we're not built into it, it can still kill trash mobs that have very, very little life. So it's a little bit useful, but not much. You'll also leech some of that spell damage from it, so you'll be able to get a little bit of leech while you're teleporting around in case you need to replenish some life. I have 5 points in Resonant Plasma, 1 point in Decoy Position, 3 points in Stable Duplicants, 1 point in Unexpected Copy, and 2 points in Uncontrolled Duplication. We have 5 points in Elemental Affinity for that Elemental Damage, 1 point in Elemental Dawn, 1 point in Elemental Dusk, and 1 point in Elemental Midnights. For Arcane Ascendance, we're going to use this every time before we channel Fireball against like rares or bosses or whenever you want to save on your mana. So we have two points in Slow Breathing. Now this is Mana Drain, this negative 20% is for Arcane Ascendance itself. However, we're not going to have Arcane Ascendance actually costing mana because we went down here and we took Acuity, which no longer drains mana, but now it only has a duration of 12 seconds. And then with one point in Cunning, I think it gives you an additional 12 seconds for 24 total, but I'm pretty sure it still only lasts 12 because it still seemed to deactivate whenever I was testing and after about 12 seconds it ended. So this one extra point down here really doesn't do you any good for the duration. However, I believe if you put more points into it, it might go up, but you can definitely move this point into say shocking expanse to get another 30% shock chance against distance enemies. Now the three points in tranquility does give 60% global mana efficiency which is going to affect fireball. So when you channel fireball you'll be able to have that 60% mana efficiency which allowed me to channel instead of 9.5 seconds I was able to channel for 14 seconds straight against the training dummy so it definitely increases it gives you a 50% increase in time of how long you can channel. And then I got 3 points in Higher Plane, 3 points in Chronoclasm, and then 1 point in Mana Surge so that for every enemy that you kill while Arcane Ascendance is active from more than 5 meters away, you're going to gain back 5 mana. While that's not a huge amount, definitely it's not going to refill all of your mana. It did help a little bit for the channeling. 
for fireball this is going to be the main damaging skill so we got quite a few things going on here first we got into the channeling so we go up through adept we go through unchained fire and we get one point into flamethrower and then past flamethrower we have two points in ghost fire so that you're guaranteed to pierce and one point in eternal fire to reduce the channel cost just a little bit of course if you're not worried about how much mana it costs feel free to take this point out and place it elsewhere you can still get more damage elsewhere another thing that we have is when you go down the bottom three points in flame ability gives two things one you can take seekers ash to where your fireballs now home in on targets and one point in flame burst means when the same target has been hit by five fireballs they then have a flame burst around them which is a little bit nice for aoe then on the left side, we got 3 points in winged fire, 1 point in fire spray for extra projectiles, 2 points in Skyer's Gambit, which gives a bunch of base crit chance, and then 2 points in arcane divergence for more projectiles. Now you might be asking, why extra projectiles? Well, each of these projectiles gives you more damage. You get 12% more damage per projectile. I tested it. These do work. So you get the six projectiles that you have here times 12%, which gives you 72% more damage. On top of that, this mana cost and this mana cost is not reflected in the channeling cost. So you basically get more damage for the cost of nothing but a few passive points. Then for Flame Ward, we have this set up to be our Oh Shit button. So we have 4 points in Star Wars Defense, 5 points in Barrier, 2 points in Shrewd Shielding, 5 points in Mental Aegis, so that 75% of all damage that you take after all the damage reductions from Flame Ward will be consumed by your mana instead, and it's still at a 1 to 5 ratio, meaning for every 5 damage you still would have taken, it's only 1 point of mana that disappears. 1 point in Prismatic Buffer, and then 3 points in Dilation to give it the longest duration you can get. And then for Focus, our Mana Regenerator, we have 4 points in Mana Flooded, 1 point in Desperate Meditation, 4 points in Revelation, 1 point in Energy Infusion, 4 points in Iron Stance, 5 points in Prison Barrier, and 1 point in Everward. You can build into the max mana gained while negative. This will give it a longer cooldown, but you can instantly gain back some mana. I haven't built into this down here too much because I just didn't like how long the cooldown would get, especially with how fast we could go through our mana but definitely try it out take a look and see if you like it for passives i have 26 points in the mage base class with eight points in scholar eight points in arcanist and 10 points in knowledge of destruction for Sorcerer, we have 87 points, with 8 points in Calculated Destruction, 2 points in Brainstorm, 8 points in Mana Shell, 10 points in Wisdom, 8 points in Pryomancer, 5 points in Lava Mancer, 8 points in Crackling Precision, 5 points in Arcane Obliteration, 8 points in Elemental Ascendance, 5 points in Spell Slinger, 10 points in Arcane Insight, 5 points in Arcane Current, and 5 points in Archmage. For items and idols, there's a few different types that we're running here. We have two idols that have increased fire damage, doubled if you have over max mana. We have a health idol, and then we have some increased mana and flat mana idols just to have a longer ability to channel. And then as I said, there are no uniques. These are all crafted items for the weapon. I do not recommend getting the increased damage while channeling as it doesn't affect the channeled fireball because the channeling tag just doesn't seem to be working it's bugged out so i would put fire damage or spell damage on there instead now the rest of these i'm just going to hover over really quick so that you can see them all they will be in the build planner which will be in the written guide and the link to that of course is in the description for the character sheet you can see we are not capped on resistances. Now while we focus, we have some extra resistances. You can see we actually are just about near capped while we focus. However, outside of focus, we're not capped. So resistances are definitely something that can be improved upon, especially in the gear section. Maybe we went overboard with the endurance. However, I feel like 60% damage reduction from endurance is going to be better than the 9% more damage that we're missing from, from like elementals. But definitely try and get these at least to 50, 60, even 70% is going to be better than what we have here. And then for armor, we got 16%. We don't have much for damages. 350% fire damage, almost 300 critical strike 
effect multiplier. Only 1100 health. And then to how to play this build and the skill rotation, really it's just going to be cast fireball and focus. I use flame ward as an oh shit button. You can put it on as an auto cast ability. However, I don't recommend it because you really want to use it before you take a big hit. If you're going up against the boss, you don't want it in auto cast. You want to use it before Lagan's beam hits you. You want to use it before Rhea comes down when the big purple circle and hits you. Because those are situations where you can get one shot, especially if you've stacked the right modifiers going into it to give them extra damage. But Flame Ward will make it to where you don't die from that hit. It'll actually make it to where you just lose some mana instead, and that's about it. And then all I do is I like to cast Arcane Ascendance, then I do Fireball, and then whenever I'm done channeling Fireball, I obviously cancel Arcane Ascendance. I'll teleport, create some create some dummies around, and then focus. So it's really just going to be Arcane Ascendance is up, and then you're going to cast your Fireballs. You can see that we're creating 20 to 30k. Maybe even slightly over 30k, depending on how many shock stacks. We got some 40ks in there. We have quite the channeling length. You can see we're channeling here for about 15 seconds straight, which is some good time. Then when it's all done, and you know you're gonna teleport around, you get your dummies to kind of take the heat for you for a little bit, and then you just focus. And of course, nobody likes how long it takes focus. But with the more mana you have, the more you'll generate per second, so it's not horrible. You know, you only need until that instant buff within a couple of seconds to have about half your mana back, and then you can go back to channeling. But that's going to be it. It is a little clunky with the whole focus thing. Hopefully, I know that they said that they're re-looking at it. Hopefully, they come up with a solution to make it feel just slightly better. And that's going to be it for this build video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and as always, stay safe, travelers.